Hi, this is Ken from the CC, here today to take you on a quick little demo of what the new version of iMovie has to offer. This is the new version of iMovie that Apple introduced just recently for 2013 and 2014, and it's part of the new iLife update. This will be a free update to previous version users, and it is free with every new Mac as well. There is also an iOS version that is available, but we will be taking a look at the Mac version. So, let's go open up iMovie here. As you can see, the interface looks a lot different compared to the last version. Apple's really pushing that much flatter interface, getting rid of the gloss and everything, so that looks nice. Don't be afraid, even though it looks different, it's still very familiar, and it still functions a lot of the same compared to the previous version, so a lot of things are similar. And there's some very nice new features that we will cover. And actually, myself, being a Final Cut Pro X user, I found the last version of iMovie difficult to use. A lot of people use iMovie, and that is great. It is there for creative people who can't afford a more expensive NLE, and it's also easy to use. But I found this version way easier to use than the last version. So let's take a look at some things here. By default, in our iMovie library, we have a date in here. This is for our event. An event stores media for you, and a project is the actual timeline of what you want your movie to look like. And by default, it makes a date, and as you can see, we don't have any projects. So I'm going to take you through some of the features using some media I have used in a previous video I have posted on the Real Deal YouTube channel. For our event here, we're going to give it a name. A video I did in the past was a tour of one of Apple's old PowerBooks, and I made that video in Final Cut Pro, but I'm going to recreate parts of it in iMovie. So we clicked on the date here, and we're going to give this event a name now. We'll call it PowerBook Tour. So now we have that named just to keep it organized and we can hide and show the sidebar if we want. Now we'll click this arrow to import our media. So we'll click that and the importer will be brought up. So we can browse through SD cards, hard drives, import directly from the camera or browse somewhere else in the system. And here I can choose what clips I want to import and I can get previews up here. And you can choose to import them into an existing event or you can make a new event. Okay, so I have my three clips here. I'll hit import selected and one very nice feature is this circle here. Do you see that? That's the activity monitor. In other versions of iMovie when you imported footage you had to wait for iMovie to process the video before you could even start using the rest of the application. This new version of iMovie is 64-bit. It is a lot faster and it can handle more amounts of memory. That is one of the nice benefits of this rewrite. It saves you a lot of time. So now we have a film strip view of our media down here. We can scrub through it. Now let's go make a project and use this media in there. So we can go up to create and we can go to movie. You can also create a trailer if you want. iMovie still has those built-in trailer templates and I'll just take you through that quickly. It basically auto-generates a movie trailer for you based on the theme you want and it's customizable. So these are still in here and there's some new themes for this version. So let's go back to create and choose movie. And iMovie still has some built-in templates if you want to base your movie off of a theme. Sports, scrapbook, playful, newscast. And you can even get previews from here. But if you just want to use your video and make your own project, you can choose no theme. So that's what we'll do for the sake of this demo. So we'll hit create and we'll give it a name. I usually like to match my project names based on my event name. So now our interface changed a little bit. As you can see, we have our libraries, our toolbar up here, our canvas, our event, and our timeline. Whatever is displayed down here in the order that the clips come in is what will show up in the video. So we have our media up here that we can scrub through. And let's say I want to start with a shot of the power book from here so I can click and drag and whatever is within the yellow boundary is what will get inserted into the timeline when I click the plus button. I click plus and it jumps right down into the timeline. As you can see it shows video and audio waveforms but since I don't need the audio for this clip I can take the little line right here and drag that down. That will turn down the volume of my clip. If you do want to use audio though you can keep that up and if you want to fade the audio you can drag these little discs at the end of the clip. So I'm gonna drag that and you can make the audio fade out, just like that. So now that the item is in the timeline here, I can trim it just by dragging the ends here, and the popovers tell me how long the clip is lasting and how much I'm adjusting it here. So now let's say I want a different clip, I can go back up to my event here, and let's say 
I want it from here to the end. Oh, maybe right there. Maybe bring this back a little bit. And we can take our selection and drag it in here. Or we can put it at the beginning. We can rearrange these things later. We can arrange them when we drop them in. And now we have this. We'll turn down the audio just like we did before. And I have one more little shot here. So maybe I want to show this part of the computer. So I'll scrub until I find a good shot there where I point at the speaker here. So I'll back it up a bit. Right there looks good. So I'll click and drag. Make my selection. And once again, I can drag this into the timeline wherever I want. But if I position my playhead at the end of this clip and I hit the plus button, that is where the clip will jump to. And once again, we can bring down the audio and we can trim these as needed. So now that we have our clips in this timeline here, and we can actually zoom this out if we want to, we can start making some edits. So up here in the toolbar, we have an enhance button, which will automatically increase the quality of your images from your video. Now this won't change everything, but for example, if your color balance is a little bit off or if it's a little too bright or a little bit too dark, it'll try to enhance the quality as much as possible. So I can click that and actually have some automatic changes be done to the video, as you can see right there. So I can keep that on or I can turn it off. And if I want to make manual adjustments, I can click the adjustment button and I can change things like the color. I can crop it. I can stabilize shaky video. I can even change the audio. I can adjust the volume here. I can set an equalizer, reduce background noise, and I could add video effects. I can also get basic information about the clip, such as the name, and I can even set the duration right here. So let's say I want this to actually be six seconds and not 6.3. I can type that in, press return, and it will shrink down here. But once again, you can drag the ends of the clip. So let's take a look at some effects here. You have audio effects, so if you click that, you'll get some audio effect options, and they are represented by these icons here. With video effects, you'll see some things like raster, hard light, cartoon, sci-fi. If I hover my arrow over none, I see none in the canvas. If I hover my arrow over sci-fi, I see the sci-fi effect. So I could choose one of these if I wanted to. Maybe I want it to be black and white. Maybe I want to give it more of a vintage look. I can click that. So I'll come out of that. I just wanted to let you know that's a nice option up there. So I'm going to hide this part now. Down here is the content library. You can browse sound effects, and there are several new music beds that come with the new themes of iMovie. Here are some examples of them. We have iReport, Modern, and Playful. And there are some others as well, as you can see. You can get to your iTunes library. You still have those map effects. If you're doing like maybe a vacation video or something, you can have animated maps. And you have titles if you need to put any text into your video, and a lot of these are automatically animated, and you can change things like fonts and colors, which we will take a look at later. So here's like a, a lens flare one, four corners, and some scrolling credits. So let's say I need a title here. Let's say I want to identify what model of computer this is. So I'll put my playhead here, and I'll, I'll just scroll through these and see what title effect I like. Maybe... Prism looks good. Maybe I want a lower third, which appears in the lower third of the screen. So maybe that one looks good. So I'll drag that in and position it here. This purple part will represent when the title comes in and ends. So it'll start here and end here. If I double click it here, I can edit the title here. So I could say Apple Power Book. And then I could say the model. This particular model is from the 90s. It's a 5300 CS. So we'll come out of this mode. As you can see, the blue line goes under the text here. That lets us know that we made some adjustments to the title settings. So I'll come out of Adjust. And now when I play this back, our title will animate over it just like that. Pretty simple. Now let's say I want some transitions here, because right now, from clip to clip, it's just a cut, right? Like that. So maybe I want to, instead of just doing a cut, I could do a fade. And there's a lot of options in here, such as the cube or swap, an iris, fade to black, blur. I'll do a simple cross dissolve, so I'll drag that in there. And I'll drag that in here as well. So now when our video plays back in between the clips, there is a nice dissolve right there, kind of like that. Okay, so I'm not gonna do a whole lot with audio or music in this demo, but I will show you how that appears in the timeline. So for example, if I wanted to add a sound effect or a music bed, I could take the track I want, 
and just drag it down into the timeline. And it will add in just like that. You can also move this down into the dedicated music track down there, and it will automatically trim to the length of your project. That activity monitor is doing the importing right there. You don't have to wait for it in the foreground anymore. It will just run in the background. So let's say we're done. We can share to iMovie Theater, which is basically your own personal theater station, I guess we could call it. It'll appear on other devices. It will even show up as a channel on your Apple TV. So we can share it there. We can email it to someone, send it to iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, CNN iReport, or if you just want to export it as a movie to your computer, you can choose File. You can preview it here, check the compatibility. It'll even give you an estimated file size. And you can choose other features like your resolution. So 1080p HD is this resolution. Maybe I want a slightly smaller file. So I can choose 720. I can add a description and tags. And by default, I can also have it just add to the theater once I export it. So that's a quick look at some of the new features in the new version of iMovie, part of Apple's iLife Creativity Suite. I hope you enjoyed this demo. Let us know what you think about the new version of iMovie, and if you have any questions on using the new version of iMovie, please let us know. And if you have not tried out this version, I recommend you do. If you are using a Mac and you have iMovie already, this is a free update from the App Store. Thank you for tuning into this video, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to stay in touch with more Real Deal videos and click that like button if you liked the video. And if you want to see more content from us or apply for a YouTube partnership, visit us on our other great websites.